I want to talk a little bit about the Dungog Festival. I brought in some programs so you can see what you missed, um, but also give an idea of uh, what the Dungog Festival is all about and trying to achieve. Uh, before I do, and I also want to talk a little bit about um, uh, Gerda's ideas of uh, economics on a very, very micro level and a couple of things that's happening in Dungog at the moment, which is the true centre of the universe. So <laughs> all apologies to Candos for that. Um, but first I want to talk a little bit about uh, the proposed Telegrid Dam uh, that was proposed back in 2006. It, it's actually been on the books since, uh, since just after the war, the Second World War. And it, it had several incarnations and was always knocked back. But in the last 20 odd years, Hunter Water was buying up quite a proportion of the land around Tilligra and, and the Williams River, which is, again, much like the video we saw before, is one of the considered by the, uh, the Healthy Rivers um, Commission as being one of the last healthy rivers, wild river systems in New South Wales. Not trying to compete or anything, but just to give you an idea uh, about the landscape. This is this is part of the land I've just purchased, actually, but it was from Hunter Water. Now that we've finally got rid of the scourge of the dam, uh, the all the yellow flowers there. I'm sorry to say to Bruce that aren't da um, yams, but probably uh, fireweed. However, you know this, it's quite a quite a remarkable landscape, and. I'm not sure how I'm going to move that forward. Okay. Okay, so, yeah, just a little bit of the, the landscape around that was going to go underwater. And to those who were talking, Tracy, I think, mentioned how you can now um, talk to... That's a very healthy-looking cow, by the way. It's, it's not absolute prime uh, agricultural land. I'm not considered it, but it's, it's pretty reasonable. Um... Tracy, you were talking about how to how to talk to coal miners and, and what have you. And the No Tilligra Dam group that was formed back in 2006 when, when uh, the announcement was made had greenies and hippies and, and all the way up to very, very conservative fifth generation farmers. And we, we got together and, and had all different reasons for wanting to, to stop this dam going ahead from... Mine was probably more from an ecological perspective, but right up to my favourite was a guy who still had the still had a, a, a beef with uh, Hunter Water or the or the Water Board as it was then for not paying his grandfather fifteen pounds for the land that where they put Chichester Dam in. So, but what we did is we argued, we we did it, but we did it behind closed doors. But when we spoke, we spoke with one voice, and I think that was. The Nature Dam Group, along with the Save the uh, Williams River Alliance, which, which had the Nature Conservation Council, the Total Environment Centre, and the Wilderness Society as members, um, and with the help of Dr John Kay, uh, who was a remarkable man and uh, very sadly lost, um, missed when he lost his battle with cancer earlier this year. He was remarkable in helping us in, in government circles to, to uh, help us stop this, but we did stop it. We did stop it, and that's sort of my message of hope for those of you fighting uh, the government on all sorts of environmental issues where they're in the wrong. Uh, we did win. On the other side of that, there were a lot of people in Dungog, it was a very divisive issue in Dungog, there were a lot of people who believed that building of the dam was going to be some economic boon to Dungog. I'm not sure how it was all going to work, but they really believed it was going to be a saviour of Dungog. So it, it did really divide the community. And for the first few years I was involved in this, I didn't really realise that because we were out on our property in Salisbury in God's country and, and, and having a marvellous time and not going into town very much. But when we did start going into town, you could really see the effect of, of this holding pattern that Dungog had been in for many, many years um, because of the, 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 the unknowing whether the dam was going to be built, what it meant for people. There was no investment in town, there was no investment in, in, in properties. Properties were going, uh, getting more degraded than they already were from the practices being used. 
So there was this real micro depression in Dungog itself. Uh, we bought a business in 2012 in Dungog, a hospitality business. Uh, um, and uh, so then obviously spent a lot more time in town and we, we really saw the effect of, of what this had had. There were, there were a lot of shops closed. Dungog relies very heavily on tourism and shops were closed on the weekend. And it, it was a very depressing, very depressing time in Dungog's history. Uh, there was a film festival that went on for five years in Dungog and it was, it put Dungog on the map around the world in fact. Uh, it was a commercial venture, it was actually a, 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 um, a thing of Dungog Council had sort of introduced the idea but then they put it out to tender and a couple of people who were well known in the industry came along and, and had this commercial venture. Very, very good at getting, getting sponsorship, didn't care who they got it from. <laughs> But um, yeah, they, they were very good at getting sponsorship, but they also paid themselves hundreds of thousands of dollars and didn't pay many bills in Dungog or in fact to any of the distributors, uh, which we've found out since in trying to get this Dungog festival going. Uh, it became defunct in, in 2012, they ran their last one and then said they weren't running one in 2013. So I, um, I kept having people approach me saying, oh, it's a real shame about the festival going. Someone should do something about that. That's a big thing, someone should do something about that. So I thought, I'll get all these people in a room and we'll find out what they can do about it. And of course, you do that and you get to do something about it yourself. Uh, of course, being incredibly qualified, because I once went to Glastonbury Festival and I've watched half a dozen movies, so I was absolutely the right person for the job. <laughs> we, did, um, we did grow the festival and, and, and uh, had our first festival in 2014, which was, we got some funding from the New South Wales government in the form of its uh, major events and tourism organisation, Destination New South Wales, and they were fantastic, they were really great. Their, their motivation, they don't like arts, they don't like sports, all they want is to double the bed numbers, the people sleeping away from home <laughs> by 2020. And they said that to us, you know, we don't care about your festival, we don't care about their content, we care about bringing people in. So that was our mandate, is to bring people to town. But really, the, the, the festival achieves a number of things. It achieves, um, it, gives, it gives a sense of, of being, and, and one of my great things is to make, especially young people, proud of being from Dungog and proud and hopefully stay around in Dungog because like most regional towns, although we do, uh, the Shire it has positive growth, just positive growth or had in the last ABS uh, statistics, but it, um, it suffers obviously from youth going to towns and what have you, like most regional areas going to the big city to study or otherwise. So to give, to give uh, Dungogians and, and the youth a sense of place and a reason for being in Dungog. Mumford and Sons came to town to Dungog in uh, 2013. And young and old, everyone, it just united the whole, whereas prior to the event there were a lot of knockers and a lot of people worried about it. But once it happened, you know, old people who would have absolutely no interest in it were still saying, wasn't that wonderful? 14,000 people came to our town of 2,900 people. And it was just an amazing event. And it, the, the youth, you know, what we like to call Dungog Fungog. And it really did bring the fun back into Fungog. And so our, our festival is, a, is a, lot about, a lot about instilling pride and a lot about having faith in Dungog itself. But it's also to, to um, bring people into Dungog and to show them uh, what a beautiful shire that we have, we've got a World Heritage listed, listed Barrington Tops National Park, we have got Guantanamo Land, I heard mentioned before, we're the southernmost area for the Antarctic beach. It, it's, it's got some amazing natural wonders, plus this wonderful Williams River, which I have the privilege of, of living on, we're very close to. Our property is abounded by the Williams River and it really is a stunning place to take people for a swim and you can drink the water, it's quite amazing. Um, my other, I got a bit carried away there and didn't show, these are just parts of property to show what was lost and what we've just purchased. And the other thing, there are a number of reasons for, as I said, for people to, to love, um, to love uh, 
the Tilliger area and not want it underwater. And heritage was a big part of it. Uh, heritage of, of, of notwithstanding, notwithstanding, and certainly acknowledging um, the, the traditional owners. But I think that whitefellas too can get attached to land. And you know, some five generation farmers, which is nothing to the thousand generations, and I do understand that. But there's still that connection that a lot of a lot of us have with the land, and uh, so there's a lot of motivations for for coming on. But back to the little festival. There's just a few bit of colour and movement about the festival. So it's quite diverse. We've got we've got um, film. We 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 diversified from film. My my very keen one is is having some, some uh, lunches and dinners produced with local produce and really trying to, uh, trying to um, show off the, the, the local area. So we have a little lunch that's a mystery that goes to different properties and what have you. Each year we have some dinners, we have an amazing amount of volunteers, over 100 volunteers to put this together and the only way it could be put together really uh, we had Shido Echo playing at my pub, so that was pretty exciting. <laughs> so it's quite diverse of music, film, and, um, and food. Uh, what I, I found a couple of things, I guess, and one of the things, we've got this little group called Local Living, and they, they produce veggies and they sell them every, every Saturday morning down in, in Dungog Town. And when they first started, they used to ring me up afterwards and say, can you take all the extra veggies? Uh, which we did and just, you know, made some menus for the, for the pub. But now, if, unless I get there while they're setting up, I haven't got a hope in hell in getting them. They're really, really popular now. So that's a, a lesson mentioned yesterday by the speaker in going slowly. I spoke to them all about, about uh, producing for Christine Manfield. So we had Christine Manfield come and do a lunch. I don't know if you know her, but she's quite a well-known chef. <laughs> And the looks on their faces, you'd think I'd ask them to kill their grandmother. I think it was, it was just a little bit too much too soon for them to cope with this idea of, of suddenly, you know, I'm a bit of a bull in the china shop, let's do this. And so that's a lesson learned, that uh, tread a little bit softly with, with um, the people and their, and their ideas. But I've got this other little project, which I think, moving away from the festival, Dungog by Design. So this is a group of artisans. There were seven in the group. When I approached them, I had some shop front. And again, they'd been, uh, they'd been um, a lot of empty shops. So we, we got this shop front in a quite a prominent part in town. And I approached these guys and said, or they approached me, we approached each other. And they said, oh, we're looking for a space. And I said, what a great idea. Here's a space for you and I don't want to charge you rent, I'll charge you a commission when you sell something, and that way, that way you, you know, you've got a chance. Well, within a month, they went from seven people to 27 people, uh, and we've got this great little, great little, we've got blacksmiths, and we've got all sorts of, um, all sorts of artisans producing, and really, they have to be local, is our, is our um, one, one criterion, I guess. Um, but again, we went a bit wrong because we, we considered the shop being a place of commerce where they did have an opportunity to, uh, to sell their wares and we ran into some difficulties and, and we sat down and had a bit of a workshop about it and we found that in fact it was the creative energy that brought them together, not the idea of selling their wares. So we had to rethink our whole way of doing doing business and once once that became the focus the place has flourished it, it's quite amazing it's a it's a real little success story and so i mean i didn't come up with the idea i stole it from uh, renew newcastle the idea of giving someone a space and and having it but all the best ideas are stolen so i can't really uh i can't really be too worried this is i think my staff put in a little plug for our pub <laughs> But we do try and, and use, utilise local, local produce as much as we can there. So again, the economy on a local scale, we're very much, we're very much focused on, um, on local and hel helping the local businesses of Dungog. And um, that's again what the festival's all about. So thank you very much for your time.